next wave that we are in the midst of, which has really been driven by the advent and the uh, adoption of technology. What kind of regulatory challenges that does, does that throw up? And what kind of regulatory roadmap do you believe India should prioritize, India deserves at this point in time to cater to the innovation that we're seeing happening, as well as ensure that the guardrails continue to remain in place? Yeah, I think excellent uh, thought because this is something that uh, we need to uh, you know, now consider. But let us start with what data is up in front of us. I think the regulators have navigated the last three years. I'm talking now on the financial sector side extremely well. You know, the COVID challenge, uh, the post-COVID handling of the economy, keeping interest rates low despite a lot of push to uh, hike interest rates which has allowed the economy to come back at the speed that it has, and at the same time nurturing uh, technology and allowing it. And I would think that uh, the regulatory approach of a sandbox is clearly working, and uh, <clears throat> whichever regulator you look at today is working within a sandbox. And within that sandbox, if you look at the entire advent of fintechs <clears throat> and uh, what they have achieved, I think it's remarkable. Yeah. I have gone on record to say that um, what I see uh, the fintechs having built is extraordinary platforms. They're extraordinary platforms. But um, unfortunately, uh, their aspiration to uh, valuations could have put them on a the wrong track. So I'm sure they will uh, correct themselves and uh, there will be a path for them. And I think at this point of time, they'll be carefully watched by the regulator. And the equation to me is very simple. If you do not make a profit, I can't see the regulator allowing you uh, greater degrees of freedom to do various things. So it is basically, uh, you know, you regulate yourself first. And uh, in that, I think the simple metric is you regulate yourself, govern yourself well, and make money, a uh, reasonable profit. And then I think the regulator will be uh, open uh, to looking at uh, how uh, you could expand your sphere of uh, activity. So I think in another couple of years that will happen because these players are really important from what I would say, triggering systemic change. Mm. Because only by them having around, being around will incumbents uh, you know, be able to change. Because they would have had no option uh, but to change. So you've, they've been able to trigger systemic change. The question is, how quickly will the incumbents then adapt? Uh, and you feel confident of the adaptability or you feel less so? See, again, uh, the two metrics that I pointed out, the data consumption in five years, where it reached and at what cost. <clears throat> and uh, the, our country being the largest, uh, having the largest number of daily digital transactions, uh, clearly indicate that uh, you don't have too much time. If all that could be done in uh, less than five years, well, UPI adoption virtually less than three years, three, three and a half years. Uh, I would think that uh, that's about the time that you would have to change. Because so three to five year yeah, window is what you believe the banking going sector to be, has? Uh, there is going to be a big rush of... Uh, you know, players doing uh, various things. Now, let's step back and let's look at what all has already been disrupted so that, you know, I should not appear to be just speaking my mind off, uh, looking at a few data points. Uh, question, what has happened in the broking industry? You had incumbents embedded there for 15, 20 years. Uh, virtually in the span of the first six months of the COVID era, they were knocked off. And uh, who were the winners? Basically straight through process processors at virtually, I would think, met that uh, test, uh, fit hai kya, free hai kya, uh, test. And they actually provided the product free. They may have made money in other ways, through a DMAT account and so on, but they disrupted. Who could be the next disruptors? I think the AMCs are going to be the next disruptors. But then would be uh, the, uh, general insurers. Life insurance is a little tougher. And the banks and NBFCs are, uh, I think, uh, clearly in line of sight of anybody who can... Uh, you know, put into play technology in an appropriate manner. In the line of sight with a three to five year window, uh, uh, th those, are, those are cautionary comments uh, uh, coming in there from KV Kamath that I think industry does need to take note of. Speaking of disruption, Mr. Kamath, uh, you know, uh, at the listing of geofinancial services, you said that uh, it's going to provide growth momentum like never seen before. Lay out for us the vision that you, that you have. I know, I know you won't, you won't uh, uh, talk specifics, but lay out for us the vision that you have, sir. Uh, I think uh, anything that I say will be a forward look statement and I don't <laughs> want to do that and uh, this five, is, uh, five years is too forward is, sir we're not is, asking you about the next for, quarter uh, this is for the CEO to talk about 
uh, not for me. No, CEO but, 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 what, but, so what, but what, what role and relevance do you believe an entity like this can play? No, I sketched a larger picture for uh, all uh, players as to what's the disruption like. And uh, I would think anybody entering the market today uh, will need to uh, wear that hat. And um, otherwise, uh, I think uh, success is going to be uh, constrained. What keeps you going? To, you know, you're, you're still at it. Uh, uh, you continue to, to find new ways of staying relevant, of new ways of keeping yourself alive and learning, uh, you know, the, uh, and opening yourself up to the opportunities that the environment presents. What yeah. keeps you going, yeah, Mr. Kamath? Yeah, I'll tell you, simply put, uh, I keep uh, going because I learn. Very simply put, that is all. Uh, you know, Bricks Bank was a learning experience. And NAPFID was a learning experience, and this also is a learning experience. <laughs> so you don't stop learning, and you find purpose in learning. That's a simple uh, and true, uh, you know, something I've said from my heart. That's all that keeps me going. Otherwise, I would not have... Uh, actually, I said that uh, uh, I've had uh, three times in my career I've said I'm going to retire. First was in 95, uh, just before I got back to India. Uh, I had said, uh, you know, I went out to Asian Development Bank for a purpose, I'm now actually putting in my papers and going back to India. Then uh, Mr. Vagul happened, he came and said, uh, so I came back and my, my wife asked me, what do you want to do now? I said, I want to go and learn. I may go to college again, I was then 46 or so, and I want to learn, this was 95 or so. Then it happened again when I stepped down from ICS and said, I want to learn. And some of my colleagues actually gifted me books. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> those books remained largely unread because I went on to something else. So uh, it's this quest for learning, I think, uh, keeps me going. It's the unending quest for learning. What is the, the biggest lesson that you've learned in the last few years? Or, or the, the biggest sort of takeaway, the biggest realization for you yeah, in the last biggest, few years? Biggest, uh, again, we are not factoring this in. That is uh, the way uh, the youth of, uh, at least in our country, I don't necessarily track abroad, are uh, driving directional change in their aspirations. Uh, all you have to do is, sometimes uh, what I do is, before going to sleep, 10, 15 minutes, I look at what are the blogs or vlogs on YouTube that are trending. This could be a 20-year-old kid who suddenly you find has got 22 million subscribers. He had less than a lakh subscribers uh, just, uh, uh, just, just uh, two years or three years back. You've got daily views of seven and eight million. Now you then try to see what is driving these guys, uh, what is then uh, driving aspiration of others, what are the comments that come in, and it's a huge learning as to the sort of uh, aspirational drive that is there in maybe the 10, 15,000 comments this chap gets on a daily basis, I think uh, makes your day in the sense that things are happening. The youth is driving uh, forward. And uh, indeed, he's earning very well, I salute, uh, and I salute every such person who's doing something interesting where people are finding that uh, this is inspirational and are trying to follow. I'm not talking of other, uh, th other things, of course, are there which educate you. But these are the sort of things, the youth, the way they are transforming is what is uh, youthful. And today, again, for a fintech, I'll say this. If you are, uh, you know, what I would call um, uh, initial um, uh, focus group, you know, we used to call it focus group, is not uh, between the age of 15 and 18, you're not going to succeed. So if you've got a product, try it out with a 15 to 18 year cohort and of course pay them for uh, you know, their uh, advice and then you see what will happen. Go to a school, run a session there and uh, you will get more inputs than all your uh, senior team put together, middle, middle level team and junior team put together. So is KV Kamath going to start a vlog? Anytime no, no, soon? No. no? I, I, I'm content watching vlogs. <laughs> okay, content watching vlogs. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for the, the long-term India bull. Uh, and of course, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Kamath, for joining us here this evening on a historic moment as we saw the Vikram lander land on the surface of the moon, India creating history. Uh, and thank you so much for being here and sharing that moment with us. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause.